with love and gratitude i offer my reverential pranams at the divine lotus feet of our dearest sweetest loving and omnipresent lord bhagwan shri sach sai baba dear brothers and sisters loving sai ram to all of you i wish all of you good health happiness and peace my greetings of love to all the officers and members of the zone 8 countries we are all blessed and fortunate to be the contemporaries of this kaliyuga avatar bhagwan shri sach sai baba he has shown us the goal and purpose of life that is to realize and manifest our innate divinity and see the divinity in all the creation and he has also shown us the path the path is to implicitly and completely follow his teachings we are going to touch upon two of his main seminal teachings one is unity is divinity and purity is enlightenment and this is the theme for our world conference and the pre world conferences first i want to congratulate all of you i heard that you all of you are conducting pre pre world conferences in your zone and diving deep into the swami's teachings and doing the study circles and also i was very happy to learn from brother valeri that the participation in the study circle is around 800 or more this is amazing this shows your perseverance in spite of all the challenges you are facing here and the covid situation putting lot of restrictions still your determination to follow swami's teaching study in depth is commendable that is wonderful swami said three p's are essential purity perseverance and patience i really congratulate you to that for that and first one i want to talk about is the unity unity is divinity here we have to swami showed the important concept we all should have clarity about that that unity should be at four levels first unity is vishti then that is part of samishti samishti is part of srishti and srishti is part of parameshti this is the sanskrit words i will now tell in english vishti that is the individual we are part of samishti that is the society and samishti the society is part of srishti which is creation and srishti which is part of parameshti that is the supreme almighty lord then how do you practice this unity at the individual level in the individual level the practice of unity is practicing unity of thought word and deed harmony of thought word and deed to have pure thoughts and say pure speech and then have pure actions so then that is harmony of thought word and deed this is at the level of the individual this is very important so this next leads to the family level because only when we practice individual level then we have world peace swami says beautifully when there is righteousness in the heart there is beauty in character when there is beauty in character there is harmony at home when there is harmony at home there is order in the nation when there is order in the nation there is peace in the world so that is how it starts at the individual level then we go to the family level family is the unit of the whole society so the harmony of home is very very important we need to adjust adapt accommodate in spite of the differences we have in the family so this is comes only after we have good understanding so first we need to develop mutual respect and understanding among the family members so this is based on the factor of love swami gives the beautiful example of family of lord shiva you know this is the divine family which lives in peace and harmony in spite of many differences it is wonderful you can all see that shiva his vehicle is the bull 
and the vehicle of mother parvati is the lion both are not compatible similarly lord shiva has snakes around his neck and his waist but the vehicle of lord subramanya his son is a peacock so peacock would attack the snakes and similarly the vehicle for lord ganesha is mouse and mouse is worried the snakes snake would like to attack the mice so and lord shiva himself on his forehead you have got the fire and then on his head what do you have ganges the water water and fire do not go together so in spite of all these differences in the family and in the lord shiva himself that is the most beautiful exemplary first divine family showing peace and harmony this is swami is showing as example there may be differences of opinion differences of approach but always see that unity and diversity next in the same society level next to the family comes the organization in the organization we are members of such sai organization swami said three important requisites for a members of such sai organization number 1 heart cool like moon and mind pure like butter and speech sweet like honey this is what is needed to be the members of such sai organization then there will be unity then we all belong to different faiths different beliefs different religions then how to have unity of faith and religions here swami says see the commonality of all religion which is love and service that is why swami summarized beautifully there is only one religion religion of love there is only one god is omnipresent and there is only one language language of the heart if you practice this then there will be harmony of religions that is unity of faith that is what is being practiced all over the world by the members of the such sai organization next we extend it to the society the community level so where there is we have members we interact with members in work in the community and society so this is all part of the vst how do you do that remember that there is only one thing exists that is the same divine atma which is pervading all that is why swami said jewels are many gold is one parts are many clay is one nations are many earth in earth is one so see that oneness in all then we will be able to realize the divinity which is divine bliss next from this vesti to samishti we went now go to srushti what is srushti is creation which is the nature so always we have to remember nature is the manifestation of god no nature itself is god so every cell and every atom of the whole creation whether it is plants animals mountains lakes everything is permeated by the divine everything is covered by the divine so we need to see that and experience that but how do you do that by respecting nature not abusing nature not to have the polluting the nature there is uh, food water etc so we need to have that when we do the practice the unity at all these levels then we go to parameshti which is the lord himself and then you become completely focused on the lord with one point a divine love then we become one with the lord so the best ways to practice this unity swami says is by practicing divine love which is pure selfless and unconditional and eternal so how do you do this divine love swami himself showed us by his example because his love was his message and he showed you can see the moon only through moonlight similarly god who is love we can experience through love and he says when you have love two important thing we need to have one pointed love to god that means don't change from one guru to another guru just be focused on only one pointed and we have guru and god in one 
Bhagavan Sri Sachi Sai Baba just focus on that. Don't deviate. This one-pointedness is very, very important in divine love. And second important is love for love's sake. It is not a bargain. Just you love the Lord for the love's sake. We just heard of one great Sufi saint which she prays to the Lord. Lord, if I am praying you to avoid hell, please burn me in the hell. So if I want to avoid, I want to seek paradise, just take me not to paradise. But if I am praying you or loving you for love's sake, just let me be face to face with you and be one with you. That kind of passion and intense love for God is very, very important to realize this unity. Next, briefly, I will touch about purity because purity, as Swami says, is enlightenment. The minute we are pure, that means we are enlightened. That is why Lord Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart for their shall see God. So all the spiritual practices we do, the bhajans, the service projects, the study circles, whatever practices we do, Swami says, the purpose is to purify our heart. Then we will see the reflection of the divine. What is this purity? Swami talks about this purity. There is external purity, internal purity. The external purity refers to the purity of the environment where we live, the home or the place where we live. So it should be clean, no dirt and uh, uh, it should be clean. Second thing is even the place should be surrounded where you are staying, all the divine pictures, pictures of the gods, saints should be there that will inspire you. Also, you should have the books, which are sacred books. All these have effective vibrations. So external purity refers to the place, environment where we live. Have nice plants around, something which is uplifting to make you easily in tune with God. Next is in the external purity, purity of the body, which Swami says always try to keep your body clean. So because Swami says cleanliness is next to godliness. Then Purity of the food is very important. The essence of the food makes our mind. So having sattvic food is very, very important for the spiritual seeker. What is sattvic food? So Swami has talked about vegetarian food, particularly vegetarian food, and how the food is obtained it is also very important. And also Swami says whenever you are not sure how the food is obtained or how cooked, the important thing is offer the food prayer. Brahma, Arpanam, we uh, uh, say, and identify the food is God, the one who is eating is God, and the essence of food is also God. Then that becomes really a sattvic food. Then it gets pure. All the impurities are gone when we offer the food prayer. So the food is very, very important also element for the purity. Next is the purity of the speech. These are all external level. That means when we speak, First, we should remember, are we speaking truthfully? And is this speech is soft? Is it sweet? Is it going to help somebody? So this, then only we should speak because speech is very powerful. But if you don't able to do this, Swami says, silence is best. Silence is the language of the spiritual seeker. And also he said, only in the depth of silence, the voice of God can be heard. So these are the things we can watch the purity at the external level, the environment, the body, and also the speech and the food. At the internal level is even much more important when you want to realize our true nature and divinity. The purity of the inner instruments, inner senses, and also the mind, the heart, this should be very pure. So what are the great obstacles? We call that six enemies. Get rid of those six enemies. That is selfish desire, and then greed, and then anger, and then pride, attachment, jealousy. All these are the one, the impurities. We need to get rid of these impurities. Then we will be able to see God. So what are the various processes? How do you get these impurities out? What are the two commonest best practices Swami Shev? Number one is doing japa, repetition of his name, repetition of any divine name will cleanse the heart of the impurities. Second is meditation, contemplation, 
like we talked about meditation, Jyoti meditation, focusing on the light, spreading the light to all uh, people in the family, friends, and the whole creation. Second is Soham meditation, to see with the each ingoing and outgoing breath to identify ourselves with God so that we realize I am that. So this is another way to get rid of our impurities. And then finally, when we get rid of our impurities, another mechanism is to do service. Selfless service is another one to um, purify our heart. And Swami has extensively talk, uh, talked about se selfless service. Here I want to emphasize mainly two points. One is when we serve, the attitude with which we serve, we should see God in the person we are seeing. That is why Jesus said, when you serve the least of your brethren, you are serving me. With that attitude, when we serve anybody, we are serving God, not anybody else. Second is quality of service is important. Swami doesn't mind how many people we serve, quantity, but the quality. Like in the temple in the Jerusalem, when that old lady went and gave few pence, Jesus said she gave more than what people put the large amounts in the coffers. Same thing, Swami, when one of the boys, student, Swami student, gave just 100 rupees, Swami was much more thrilled than the people when they gave millions of dollars for the hospital project. So Swami looks at the heart, quality. And second thing is how much sacrifice you do for the sake of God. That is what he, see, uh, he sees. And another thing is we, whenever we are doing surveys, two things come in our way. One is our ego and second is our attachment, that I am doing this work and I want the results for that. We should have complete conviction that really God is doing, God is using us as an instrument of his love. So that should be the conviction with which we should do. Then when we continue to do this, we will finally realize and come to a stage where the person serving, the person being served, and the process of service all become one. There is no two. That is the goal. That is the reach stage where we reach the purity. So I want to conclude how Swami has shown us that unity is divinity and that can be realized by practice of divine love. And purity is enlightenment. How we get rid of the, both the external impurities, internal impurities by practicing japa, meditation, and selfless service. So I thank you for the opportunity to share these few thoughts with you. Now I'm going to the questions. I received some questions from uh, uh, your officers. So I want to address those questions. First question was, why some devotees give up the organization? What is the reason for this? Before we go to that, I want to share that there are the greatest signs of divine grace is this. Number one, this is recorded in the scriptures and Swami mentioned there are 8.4 million species of beings in the world and of them the pinnacle of creation is human birth. So we are blessed to be born as human beings. And here there are many 7.8 million, 7.8 billion, not million, 7.8 billion people on this planet Earth. But how many people are interested to know the truth, interested to know God? So we are blessed to know the avatar of the age. So that is second sign of his grace. But having come to him, how many people have the opportunity to serve? So to be able to serve in the organization which bears his name is a sign of his greatest blessing and greatest grace. We should try to remember that. And Swami has said that, I have been preparing you over many lifetimes to do this work of mine to be instruments of love. And he also assured people who serve selflessly and with love in my organization, they will be liberated from the cycle of birth and death. Not only them, their many generations of their family will be liberated. So that is the kind of wonderful gift 
Swami is giving. So we need to see that how lucky we are to be participating in this organization. But Swami cautioned, the minute the ego descends, my work stops. That means I won't use you anymore. So then the reason why people leave the organization, leave the organization is because the ego descends. Because ego is the greatest obstacle. So we should always pray to the Lord, Swami, let me serve in the organization till my last breath. Swami says you should consider such an organization as your, your life breath. And he also said many times in the discourse, people who leave the organization are the most unfortunate. That is there because of their bad karma. And also at one time in a discourse, he wa uh, Swami cautioned that he will separate the wheat from the chaff. That means people who have superficial faith and not have a real pure love, they will be separated. So, but we should also have that tenacity and that steadfast faith to hold on to him. That is what it is. So why there is the reason the people leave the organization. And second question was, could you please share with us one of your beautiful personal experiences with Swami? First, I would like to share which happened when Swami was in the physical form, and second, which he, after his Maha Samadhi. So this happened about 30 years ago. I was driving from my office to home. On my way home, which is only about five minutes, suddenly I was hit with a huge truck, 18-wheeler truck. It is like almost like a bomb explosion. I didn't know what, for a minute, I didn't know what is happening. And finally, the police came, and then uh, I, I was not uh, seriously uh, hurt. But I was not taken to the hospital, but I had a lot of pain and uh, neck injury and some uh, thing for a while. But fi finally, without any major problems, I completely recovered. So when I went to see Swami after a few months to Prashant Nilayam, I expressed gratitude to Swami for saving my life. Swami you really saved my life because right after, during that accident time, I didn't think about Swami. Right, but right after, within a few minutes, thank you, Swami, I said, Om Si Sai Ram. But Swami, you know, he is omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient. He said, yes, during the accident, you didn't think about me, but still I saved you. So you say that, so he is with us wherever we are. He says inside us, outside us, whether we are thinking about him or not, is always protecting us like the eyelid protects the eye. So there are many instances how he took care of me, my wife, my children, my mother, father. You can go on. There are many, many experiences where Swami was guiding us, guarding us, protecting us, showering love of infinite mothers. But when Swami left his form on April 24, 2011, we were all very sad, shocked, because we loved that beautiful form and sweet name and his wonderful nectarine leelas. When he left, it was like a shock. So, but Swami showed us he never left us. He was with us, he is with us, he will be with us forever as our eternal companion. So he showed me by a personal experience. So I was with Swami during the last days, uh, able to serve Swami in, when he was in the hospital uh, in the month of uh, April. So after Swami left his uh, body, so till the various ceremonies are over, I was there. Then I had to come back to USA to go back to my practice. The day I wanted to leave, I had such an intense pain that I could not sit, I could not stand, I could not lie down, I thought I'm going to die, and I thought I have a major medical emergency like a heart attack or a burst, blood vessels. So I was going on praying, and my wife and my family was praying, and by morning, it, most of the pain subsided. So I went to the Swami's hospital, super specialty hospital, had a checkup, and found that my blood test showed my liver tests were very, very bad, very abnormal. 
normal should be like 40 or 50, it was about 20 to 30 times as much. The, uh, the blood enzymes, liver enzymes were high. And my x-rays, the ultrasound of my abdomen showed there were stones in my gallbladder. So I had an acute gallbladder attack. The usual treatment for that is surgery. So that is what all the doctors recommended and my family full of doctors recommended. But I was saying that Swami is my physician, he is the surgeon of surgeons, he will take care. So finally, I with that uh, faith in Swami that he will take care. I came back to USA where the journey is about 22 to 24 hours and the family was concerned something happens on the plane, what will happen? By Swami's grace, nothing happened. And when I came back and I have it checked, because I didn't have any more pain for all the time. And then I had a checkup done where it showed the gallbladder x-rays did not show any more stones and the blood test showed the liver enzymes were normal. This shows how Swami takes care of us. There are many, many instances, even after Swami left the body, I had many experiences during my travel around how Swami continues to take care of us. So we should always have the conviction that Swami has never gone anywhere. He is with us and we should have that absolute faith and just hold on to Him and He will take across. That is the answer to the second question. Third question is, because of the coronavirus outbreak, many devotees faced many challenges. What is the spiritual sense of this situation? What is the main lesson we should learn from this situation? It is very important, very practical question. Yes, this COVID-19 is a pandemic and it is a public health emergency. About more than 180 countries around the world are affected. It is not only affecting the physical health of the people, but it is having really paralysis of the economic situation in many countries and also the educational challenges are happening and people are also losing jobs, a lot of emotional disturbances at the family level, at the individual level. Yes, these are all challenges. But here, we need to do the best we can. We need to, as Swami says, life is a challenge and face it. Life is a challenge, meet it. So we need to meet this challenge which God has provided. Because how do you face it? With courage and strength that we have Swami with us. That is the advantage we have. We have the greatest pillar to lean on, which is Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba. So here, if you are really a spiritual seeker, first you need to follow the law of the land. Take care of your normal health precautions, whatever the advisory you are getting from the local government and the health authorities we need to face. And also try to adjust or accommodate with your family under the work situation. So accept whatever God has given as a sign of his grace. Because as spiritual seeker, we should have believed whatever happens, it is like a mantra for me, whatever happens, happens by God's will and this is for my good. Whatever happens, happens by God's will, this is for my good. Because even a blade of grass won't move without his will. That is what the scriptures say. And even Quran says not even a dry leaf will fall without the will of Allah. And what did Jesus say? Not a hair would turn black to white uh, without the will of the Lord. So everything is the will of the Lord. So if we really love the Lord, not only we should accept whatever happens, the real test of spiritual seeker is joyful acceptance. Lord, I love you for what you have given. So everything, there is a beautiful bhajan. Everything is the sign of his grace. Know that the Lord is sweetness itself. Everything is the sign of his grace. So we should consider everything as prasadam. So whenever you get prasadam, anywhere in Prashantri and Yaman Center, you, whatever we get, we accept it with love and gratitude. So we should accept every situation. So this is a test. Swami says when you get a test, you will it is his taste. And when you pass the test, then it makes you stronger. 
like we do exercise, physical exercise as giving pain. After that, what happens? You get physically stronger. Same thing, these challenges, these difficulties give us spiritual strength so that ultimately we will develop that stage of equanimity. First, you will develop forbearance. You take anything as a challenges with fortitude, forbearance, and finally you develop the state of equanimity. So this is about the um, uh, coronavirus question. The fourth question is there is a lot of information about Prema Sai's birth in the internet. Is there any official information proving it? So, you know, Swami has declared in his discourses, this is a triple incarnation. First is Shirdi Sai, who is the avatar of Lord Shiva. And then Pati Sai, this is Bhagavan Sri Sat Sai Baba, who is Shiva Shakti. And then next incarnation is Prem Sai, which is embodiment of only Shakti. And Swami said in his Shirdi avatar, where he left his body on October 15th, 1918, I will come back after eight years. He declared it. So he came back in 1926, November 23rd. And also in this avatar, he said he will come as Prem Sai, but he did not tell when. So people are making many guess works. There is no official stand for the organization or even Swami never told when he is coming back. So when we are supposed to know, we will know. But let me tell you, the real Prem Sai right now, we have Swami himself. What is Prem Sai? Prema is love, Sai. Our Sai is full of love. He is an embodiment of love. He is an incarnation of love. His whole life, his message, his work, everything is filled with love. Why do you need to go anywhere else other than Swami? Here I want to tell you a nice anecdote which happened. This happened more than 20 years ago. I was with Swami in his house. And just I was alone with Swami. He was feeding me, blessing me. I had a wonderful, blissful experience. I was so happy. I said, Swami, let this continue. Then Swami was smiling. Then I mentioned, Swami, I want to come back when you come as Prem Sai. Then Swami became stern. He says, why do you want to come back? You have received so much of my love. Because Swami has showered so much love on all of us. He says, you should have a resolve. This should be my last birth. I don't want to come back because having experienced the highest is divine love. So he is the Prem Sai. We should not even waste our energy. Our energies, our time, talent should be focused only on this Sai. Who is our, for us, he is the Prem Sai. So if you are destined to know the one who is going to come, we don't know. But let me, friends, caution you. There are so many people taking advantage of this and proclaiming themselves as Prem Sai in different parts of the world and different parts of India. So they are taking advantage of the innocent devotees. For us, we have Swami who is embodiment of love. Just only one thing, repeat his name and dive deep into his teachings. And we are so fortunate. He has given more than 1,500 discourses which are all recorded. We have them available in audio and video. And he has written 16 Vahinis, which are full of nectar, which are full of sweetness and amrita. So just let us take advantage of this. Live in the present, who is, as Swami said, God is omnipresent rather than going into these imaginary things. So that is the answer to your, to your question. So please, for us, the Prem Sai is Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba. And the last question. How to develop surrender to God and have complete faith and trust in Him? This is very, very important part of all spiritual practices. Number one, faith. Swami says faith should be our life breath. The one without faith is equivalent to a person without life. So faith is important. That's why Jesus said mustard seed of faith Faith can move mountains. So the whole spiritual journey, Lord Krishna says, at one shore of the journey is 
samshayatma vinashyati the one with doubts will perish in the river of life we cross and the next bank of the river is shraddhavan labhate jnanam the one with faith will attain enlightenment so whole our spiritual journey is get out of the doubt to have the absolute faith the absolute we have faith in the lord then we are enlightened that is the journey we need to have that uh, thing absolute faith there is why swami said to have communion with god there are two things important faith and love he gave an example you want to write letter to somebody an envelope what do you need address and the stamp so if you write the address without stamp it won't go anywhere it will come back if you have the stamp without address it will go to the dead letter box so you need both stamp and the address similarly we need both faith and love here i will give you an instance how we should have absolute faith faith in what number 1 faith in god faith that swami gave us he is our lord and he is our god and we will love him and serve him to the last breath so you should have faith is god no more going back and forth second we should have faith in his words faith in his words his words are the scriptures so we should have absolute faith every word he says is like a mantra we should dive deep and completely have faith the third important thing is faith in ourselves who is ourselves that not little self the real self which is atma so we should have faith in god faith in the scriptures faith in ourselves so there are people who have that absolute faith no questioning what swami said i will share with you two instances one is swami shared some of you might have heard this story but is what well uh, again hearing about it once lord krishna was going with his uh, brother in law and friend which is arjuna and his uh, and his stroll and then suddenly in the sky he, he shows him a bird and he says oh see that bird there is a crow the arjuna says yes after that say no no it is a parrot he says yes 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 then he says it is no no it is a peacock he says yes so whatever he is telling whatever bird arjuna says yes then lord krishna teases him don't you have common sense whatever you i say you say yes then arjuna gives a wonderful answer lord my senses can deceive me my eyes can deceive me but your words are eternal truth i depend more i have more faith in your words than in my own senses that is what we should have complete faith in the words of the lord and second instance i would i will tell which i shared in front of swami this is the centurion in the roman army in the time of jesus so this centurion is in the roman army he was like a captain in charge of more than 100 soldiers his servant whom he loved like his own son who was very ill he was dying so then he was very distraught and he went to lord jesus lord so my servant is dying please help me then lord jesus embodiment of love and compassion he said he was about to get up you want me to come to your house and heal him lord please don't because i don't deserve that but just say a word it will be uh, that is enough for me he will be healed and he had that kind of faith then jesus looks around what a faith nobody in the whole of israel has this kind of faith so his faith has cured the servant about he was about to turn back to go to the home then people came running to him oh this servant is all healed you see the power of faith that kind of faith we should have absolute faith in swami his words and in our atma supreme self second come to the surrender surrender is the last word in spiritual life surrender is equal to jnana where surrender means you don't exist not me not me thou will be dying thine will be dying completely surrendered to his will that is absolute surrender swami gave the example how the example is like a kitten and the uh, cat like the small kitten when the cat takes the kitten it keeps in the mouth and puts it different places what all the kitten does is mew 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 that's all it doesn't say anything it is happy wherever the mother cat puts it there 
Similarly, in life, we should completely, Lord, wherever you keep me, I am happy. So, this is because you are the one who is running the show. It is nothing mine. So, you should have that complete faith that everything is him. And there are many examples. Swami talked about uh, complete surrender. Like Lakshmana in uh, Ramayana, Swami talks about this. He was going with Lord Rama in the forest and uh, he had to put a little hut in the uh, forest. So, then uh, Lakshmana asked Lord Rama, where should I keep? He says, put it wherever you want. Then Lakshmana falls at the feet of Lord Rama, cries, what did I do wrong? Because he felt that he doesn't have his will of his own. So, Lord Rama wanted to show that how this man completely surrendered to Lord Rama, not to have will of his own. That is what we all have to say. We do the best. It doesn't mean no effort. We do the best effort we can. But finally surrender, Lord, your will be done, not mine. That is in beautifully said in Sanskrit, naham naham tuhu tuhu. Lord, I am nothing, I am nothing, only you exist. So, this is very important but not easy because when you completely, completely surrender to the Lord, two important things come. That is the test for yourself, if I surrender to the Lord or not. That means you don't have any major likes and dislikes because these are the two planets which bother us. We have some strong likes and dislikes. You are always maintain that stage of equanimity. You are always equal-minded. And so, that is the sign that we have surrendered. And second thing is peace. As Lord Jesus said, peace that passeth understanding. That is why Swami's Nilayam is called Prashant Nilayam, abode of supreme peace, where you will have that absolute peace. And Swami says, each one of us have the Prashant Nilayam with ourselves, in our own country, in our own home, and in our own heart. That comes from complete and absolute surrender. So, I hope I answered all your questions and thanks for this opportunity to share Swami's uh, love and message with all of you. I pray to our Lord Sai to shower his choicest blessings on all of us. Sai Ram.